coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host here on Teaching with Board Games. And up until now, you've if you've been watching the channel, you've only ever seen my grandson Timothy on the channel. Uh, whereas there has been another one sort of in the background there, although she hardly is a someone who stays in the background. She's a very vocal, energetic little thing. And that is my granddaughter Tiffany. Now lately, Tiffany has um, become more aware of board games and as we were playing as a group of, there was a couple of adults and Timothy was playing with us and we were having a good time and she was watching. She kind of wanted to get in on it too, but she wasn't sure what was happening or whatever, but she was sort of enjoying some of the, I guess the energy, whatever she was feeling that was coming off of it. She saw we were having a good time and she wanted to be a part of it too. So much so that she started to get this whole enthusiasm for games and she, every time she was coming over now, she was taking me by the hand saying, Papa, Papa, come play with me. Let's play games. Let's play games. And she would take out the... Well, at first she was really interested in the Rummy Cube because that's what we were playing at the time that she was really kind of getting into it. She was watching Timothy and I play Stop Thief and then she was watching us play Rummy Cube. She's really getting into this now and she, she is now, every time like I say, coming over, is wanting to play games. And that's really what's inspired me to do this episode today. So play of any kind with a child is going to be so important to their development. But giving them the choice of and modeling the play of board games in amongst the other things that they may be playing, I think is so important for young kids. For all of the educational, social, um, mental, and all those health reasons and benefits that you get from playing board games, it's also for the fact that they start to see board games as a very viable and real thing that they can do for a fun activity that they're not always looking to maybe be on a screen or whatever, they start to realize that this is a choice that they have as well in their repertoire of fun things that they can do. This then will help them to not only learn whatever we're, you're playing at the time and whatever learning they do through their play, but it also encourages them to become lifelong learners, which is what a real a person who loves board games becomes because they are constantly involved in the learning of that the board games provide through the play of them. So when playing board games, I mean, there's a lot of things that a preschool child can be learning through the play of the board game, and that would be such things as, you know, your basic knowledge of things like colors, numbers, animals, animal sounds, shapes, all kinds of different things like that. You're also going to be learning your language skills as they're learning to talk about what they're trying to do or what they want to do and communicating as, to, as part of playing the game. It's going to help them to be able to focus on something because to play a game from beginning to end requires a certain amount of focus to be able to sit down and focus on that game for that given length of time. Some games are going to require to learn teamwork as you work cooperatively to achieve the end. You know, there are games for um, preschool children and our young children which would be um, cooperative. I'm thinking of like Stone Soup and Race to the Treasure, two games uh, which I've already reviewed on the channel which you can look up and are cooperative games which be for very young children. You know, those social skills is another thing they're learning as they're learning to take turns with somebody else. You know, wait your turn. You know, turn will come back around again. Critical thinking, problem solving, of course, and even the decision-making skills, just the ability to make a decision, not just become paralyzed at the thought that I have to make a choice here. And believe me, I've seen kids who, who still struggle with that. Board games also have that added benefit of being able to play something with other people in a face-to-face, -face, connecting with them in that way. Of course, you're also getting away from those screens, getting away from the phones and the video games and the tele televisions and enjoying some community time with some friends and family. I'm going to put up on the screen now, this is a picture of Tiffany when she was playing Rummy Cube for the first time. And as she's playing and she's just having a great time, just putting those numbers together and I was just having, enjoying watching her having a great time. And she was so excited by it and she was saying, Papa, look, I'm winning. I don't know what her rules there that she was playing by in her own mind or how she was determining she was winning the game, but you know what? I didn't care. The, all that mattered to me was that she was having a good time and that she was enjoying the, the, the play of this game. She wanted to feel like she was a part of it too. And I was only too happy to join in with her and play with her as well because she invited me to play with her and said, come, come play with me. And I played with her and we just put numbers together and I asked her what some numbers were. So there's a little bit of learning there as well as we, you know, I can't help myself being a teacher. But it wasn't the, the learning of the numbers and the things that was important to me. What was important was that she was having fun. 
and it was really great for her to see her just playing with this game and enjoying the activity and then especially the fact that she invited me to play with her so now that we are building up this this sort of this history this this knowledge now that she knows that papa equals board games and papa has these fun games that i can play and this is something that we can be doing and as i say fostering this love of board games in her so as she gets older it's going to be something that's going to continue to help her to grow and develop as a learner now we have since rummy cube i've been introducing her to some other games like i introduced her to snorta which is a farm game with animal sounds and things and uh, we just played like a memory game where i hit the animals inside the barns and had her um you know we should draw a card and if it was the chicken where's the chicken and some of the animals like i think four of the animals five of the animals had to still be in the bag because they, there wasn't enough barns for all the animals and so she would have, she was getting really good with it. She would say, okay, you know, cat. So she'd find the cat, chicken, there's the chicken, sheep. Sheep is in the bag. And so it was just, it was a fun little memory game for her. She was enjoying it, you know, for a time. And then we moved on to something else where we started to play some Tiny Polka Dot. Now Tiny Polka Dot is another game that I've talked about on my channel and wonderful game. And uh, it's just the, the visuals of the cards and the, the nice sturdy cards for the kids to be handling. And she was enjoying playing with that, but of course, when I think this is an opportunity for me to um, maybe engage her in this game, that's of course where everything kind of breaks down. What number is this? What number is that? What number is it? Yeah, yeah. What's that? Okay, can you tell me the numbers? How many, how many circles are on here? But when playing with your preschool kids, remember that it's, you know, just appreciate the time that you have with them, appreciate the, the time that they're letting you play with them, that they, they are going to appreciate the time that you are playing with them too. And it's about fostering that love of the game. Don't feel that you need to be pushing in the, the material there of the learning. If they don't want to learn, don't force it on them. If they just want to make color patterns or just put things in random orders, whatever, just let them have the fun. Let them enjoy the game as they want to enjoy it at the time. The point is, is to have them seeing that this is something that you and they can enjoy together that is going to be a fun activity so that as they get older and understand better, then you can start to implement some of the rules and things and explain the rules and, and how things work. And they, they will then start to appreciate that side of the game as well. But for the beginning, just let them explore let them have fun. The learning will happen. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. If you have any questions about preschool games or other games you might like, you know, or things around teaching games to preschoolers, please leave a message in the comment section below. If you have any ideas for games you might like to see on the channel or other topics of pedagogical discussion, again, leave me that message in the comment section below. Until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood with Teaching with Board Games saying, Thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with me?